So hello everyone, I'm Dan Montesran, Community Organizer for Ma Haven Community Partnership, and here today we have Ninoska Carolina. Ninoska, can you please introduce yourself? Hello everyone, my name is uh, Ninoska Calorina, and I am the Founder and Executive Director of the Ma Haven Film Festival. I was raised in the Ma Haven section of the Bronx, and um, for many, many years I wanted to give back to the community. And the best way that I could think of giving back to the community, community was by creating a film festival that was, um, I felt lacking in this area and I'm very happy to be a part of it. Awesome. So Carolina, we're gonna go ahead and get started by, sorry, Minoska, we're gonna yes. go ahead and get started <laughs> by rating our favorite Hispanic dishes, you know, like your top five, your top five. Something you cannot live without. Okay, so definitely top five. I don't know. Okay, so number one would be um, arroz con gandules Oof, and yeah. chuletas. <laughs> and then, um, of course, I have, I love um, arroz con salchichas and chuletas again. So I guess that's two variations of the same dish. Um, I love my mom's um, arroz con gandules and lechon. Ooh. Like that's like her staple. She makes it as often as she can, and I'm always here for it. Um, oh man, uh, she. So my mom is from Nicaragua, and my favorite dish from Nicaragua is actually called el vigorón, which is uh, like yuca and then like fried pork on top with like uh, with a salad made out of cabbage. So that's something I love to eat from there. Oh my goodness. You got goodness. me with yuca. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I got you with yuca. yuca. <laughs> yeah. Fried yuca, boiled yuca. Yeah, and, right. And do you know what panapen is? Oh, do no. You know I what? It's like, the, they call it a breadfruit. So it, it's oh, like green, oh, okay. like a, with like some like white spots on the outside. But when you cut it up, you can, it's, it's like tostone. You can fry it. You can boil it. You whatever you want, <laughs> right? Um, so I really like that. And then, so my dad is from Puerto Rico. So I would say like, um, like pasteles. <laughs> oh, I love pasteles. <laughs> yeah. So you know, yeah. I guess that would be my top five. <laughs> I'm getting hungry just like oh hungry. right and then of course yeah my sister just reminded me of something I, I was thinking about it but then I thought of pasteles so like overall like the best like go-to snack if anything would be in Central America it comes from El Salvador it's on pupusas. pupusas so if you guys don't know about it google it it's like the best thing so it's like the the main one is like um it's like corn like masa stuffed with cheese. It'll change your life. <laughs> to be honest with you, I, I've seen the pup oh, pupusas before, but I yeah. never actually had one. I never had Oh pupusas. my God, you're missing out completely. They have like different variations, but the most, like the classic one is the one with cheese. They have like the vueltas, which is like meat and beans in it, like refried beans, which is also really good. But um, the cheese is always like my go-to one. So yeah. <laughs> Any particular, you know, restaurant in Mahaven Haven or the South Bronx that you like? Yes, um, it's called Seis Vecinos. Oh, um, I, just, I was just there this weekend. Yeah, right. It's um, I I love that restaurant, and I think that there's a, a lack of um, Central American culture mm -hmm. cultural restaurants here. Um, you know, because we have a lot of Dominican restaurants, we have a lot of Puerto Rican restaurants, mm -hmm. we, of course, have a lot of Mexican restaurants, but when it comes to Central America, it's this a very big population, but it doesn't match the restaurants, right? So the cool thing about that restaurant, since you were there, is that they have um, foods from, like, all over Central America, mm -hmm. and they yeah. actually have pupusas there, too. So next time you go, like, order one. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, you know, I, I love the ambience. Like, of course, now they're doing outdoors, but they have, like, great drinks. Um, they have a great family atmosphere. It's, you know, family-friendly. Like, you could take your kids there. You know, they have good food, good music, good service. So that's, like, right now, like, my top restaurant. 
Yeah. When, you know, when you talk about having a strong sense of community, that's what you get when you go there. Because I was right. just very you know, Yes. I, right. I didn't know exactly. anybody, but I felt like, you know, everyone was just, you know, like, yeah. you know, talking to one another. <laughs> I was like, oh. No, exactly. Like, they like if you're still going to sit, like, next to a table, they will, like, you know, give you the nod, like, hello, you know. And then, like, that's what I liked about it. Like, the very first time I was there, like, the waiters, well, I don't want to call them waiters, like, servers, they were just very open with you, and and they were just very welcoming, you know? They, like, you knew them, like, all your life, basically. That's how they made you feel. So, and you know, I loved it. Like, you know, we were like, oh, what did you order? Is it good? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you know, I never know what to order. No, right. So, I guess because... Um, um, you know, like I said, my mom is from Nicaragua, so the menu was really refreshing for us. We were like, oh my God, they have this, they have that. So it was like, it, it was very joyful to be there. And I think the servers kind of like fed up of our, um, our excitement to be there. So now when we go, we like, they already like know us. They're like, oh, como estas, you know? And then, um, and then like we, my sister and I, we gave like some of the servers like nicknames. That remind us of like our like aunts basically. So one of them is like Tia Eli, like, oh Tia Eli is she's over there, she's on that section. So um <laughs> so yeah, so it's like a really fun place to be in. So and then the neighborhood is really, really cool too. So you know, it's hard to find parking, but it's a cool neighborhood too. <laughs> it is. Especially you yeah. know, if you walk down a few blocks, they have townhouses, which I did not know. Yes. Right, I was looking for a parking spot, and I and I kind of saw them. I was like, "Oh my god, I didn't know that they were over here!" And and the, it was a nice discovery. Yeah, it really. Oh, yeah, was. I, I had a great experience. You know, in my no, goal, it totally I, was. I, every restaurant in the Bronx. I'm not <laughs> saying don't go to the city, but I'm saying you can still come to the Bronx and have right. a great time. No, I totally agree with you. Yes, I one thousand percent agree with you. And Seis Vecinos is definitely a go-to spot. For sure. Mm -hmm. So now, um, I know we talk about the food because we have to, you know, <laughs> how can we not? So do you have, right. or do you have any uh, Hispanic uh, role models growing up? Of course, my entire family. <laughs> 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 the first one would be my grandma. Um, oh my God, because her birthday is coming up, so I'm a bit emotional. I don't know why. Um, my mom and I, we were just talking about her because she passed away in 2013. And um, and then we were literally like just talking about her, so I guess that's why I'm reacting this way. But my grandma for sure is a role model. Um, oh boy, I don't know why I'm so emotional. Um, <laughs> that's a good <laughs> she, yeah, right. Um, she was born and raised in Nicaragua, and um, in the early 70s, she basically like migrated over to the U.S. Um, and she she at the time had seven kids. And, um, and she brought every single one of them over. And, um, you know, like, there's a lot of stories growing up of, of you know, uh, my mom got on the plane for the first time because she came in February. So Nicaragua is really hot. And so she, like, gets off the plane and, like, boom, it's cold. And it's, she's never experienced that coldness before. And, um, you know, so there's a lot of stories um, because of the country being very poor um, and it's still a developing country, um, the the yearning of being better in the United States has has been across the board with all of my aunts and uncles here. So um so every single one of my aunts and uncles they they bring something special to the table. So I would say like every single one of them, beginning with my grandma, has been someone that I look up to and a role model and in very different aspects. You know, I have one of my aunts that's very business savvy and I have another one that works for the government. You know, my mom, she like did a lot for us, you know, with the little resources that she had. So it's every single one of them has a role in who me and my sister are today. You know, I'm really glad that you mentioned it because oftentimes, you know, we want to look at celebrities. We want to look. Right. At yeah. Someone else, you know, but we, we have some <laughs> role models within our family. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, if we look, if we stop for a moment just to think about it, there's always a strong woman, always a strong woman. You know, right. I agree. Right. Right. And then on my father's side, um, you know, because I grew up with my mom's side of the family. And so my father's side, like it's, 
um, you know, the Puerto Ricans. So their struggles are a little bit different than mm-hmm. the struggles that my mom had growing up. But either way, like my dad, he's also been a role model, but again, like in a different capacity. Yeah. So I feel like I've taken what I can from everyone when I was growing up and just, you know, and just became the person that I am today. Bless you. <laughs> my sister just sneezed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, and you and you are doing great things, you know, with your organization with the Mount Haven Film Festival. Can you tell us a little bit more? Like what what inspired you to do this organization? So it's a it's a two it's a two answer, right? And they're and they're all meshed together. So we grew up, like I said, in the Mount Haven section of the Bronx. Um and we um you know, I always wanted to give back to the community, but I always knew that doing like a soup kitchen kitchen wasn't like my thing, you know, like going to, you know, for like Thanksgiving or the holidays or something, because I felt that that was just like, just for that moment. And then you're like, okay, what else now? Right. And then, um, so the years went by, you know, I went to school, all of that good stuff. And then um, my sister, she's the filmmaker of the family. Right. And last year in early summer, like early 2019, we're on a plane headed to LA for a screening of one of her films. And, um, and I just like, remember we're talking and then I just like kind of stopped the conversation and I asked her, is there a film festival in the Bronx? And she goes, I don't know. And then I'm like, well, if you don't know, I don't know. Right. Cause you're the filmmaker. Right. And, um, and that's just how it started. It was an idea. And then, like while I'm on the trip, like I'm like trying to Google for film festivals and I couldn't find any. And then eventually, like, I found two of them. And then I said, well, that's good. That means there's already something here. We're going to add another one. And, and that's how My Haven Film Festival came about. And here and we are. Actually, when I was looking at Apple Line, I couldn't find much. But then I came across your website. And right. I was like, really curious to, like, find out, like, how did it come about? Because, you know, mm-hmm. there is a lot of representation in film. Mm-hmm. When it comes to, like, minorities, people of color. Like, right. Like, very so much. Right. No, I mean, I feel like, um, you know, because my sister's part of the team, I feel like the Bronx is very unique in the sense of there's a lot of minorities here, Mm -hmm. but we don't feel like minorities, right? If anything, like uh, someone else will feel like a minority because you go to the bodega, like everybody speaks Spanish here. Um, Even the people that, like all of a sudden, like Spanish is the official language. (laughs) And then... (laughs) <laughs> right, exactly. And then like people from all backgrounds, they start speaking Spanish. Like they'll say, No, those pesos, those pesos and you're like, Where are you from? <laughs> right. But um but I think that that's part of the culture here. And I think that that's what I wanted to convey at the My Haven Film Festival. Like I wanted it to be very accepting. Like I didn't want to um not have a category for instance just because it wasn't per se like a narrative film. You know, we have in our film festival, we opened it up to students. We opened it up to um, experimentals, documentaries. So, and, and it was like from all walks of life. We didn't say, well, they have to be um, Hispanic or they have to be from the Bronx, you know? I like to say that we are a Bronx-based film festival, but we are not Bronx exclusive. We're like open to everyone. No, that's great. That's great, you know? And I think what you guys are doing is great. Um, Thank also, you. No, no, of course. Uh, also, <laughs> um, like, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on you, but what do you want your Hispanic legacy to be? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a big question. <laughs> what do I want my Hispanic legacy to be? That just because you're Hispanic doesn't mean you can't do it. You know, there that shouldn't be a closing door. That should be a form of opening doors, right? Um, I don't, like, I obviously I see myself as a Hispanic person, but I I use that towards my advantage. Like, hey, I'm Hispanic. Like, I'm very open to culture. You know, I'm, you know, technically biracial, right? If you want to call it that. Like, I come from two separate areas. I come from Central America and the Caribbean. And you mix those two things together. And I oh. feel like, because, right, I feel that because of that, it's, I've been exposed to so much, right? Um, I'm very familiar with Central America, South America, the Caribbean, and of course, because I was born and raised in the U.S., like, I have 
that as well. So being Hispanic is is very powerful. It definitely is. And I think we carry ourselves with so much pride. I, I yes, think, you know, we no do. Tell us, you know, Mexico. It's just like everywhere we go. Like, yeah. like everywhere you go, like, you know, first, right, you know, like, like right. You, you naturally gravitate towards like another Hispanic mm -hmm. person and you may not know like which country they're from, but all of a sudden you find yourself talking to someone and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm from Peru. I'm like, what? That's crazy. I'm from whatever, you know? So it's, it's, it's like a, you know, like, like this uh, magnet that we have towards each other. It's, it's always, I feel like I'm always welcome, like in your sense, like um, in States Vecinos, right? Like you just walked in there not knowing anything yeah, and you walk yeah. and, and you, all of a sudden you're like part of the family. Yeah. <laughs> So for I don't sure. Know if it happens to you, but it's like, you know, when I was in high school or even when I went uh -huh. to me and I see a group of people, I automatically go to my group. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, exactly. I like it's just walk. right. Yeah. It's just something that, you know, it's the warmness that they that we give off. For sure. For sure. And I think, you know, I, I think, you know, I just want to go back to what you said before. Being Hispanic is not a disadvantage. I love the no. fact that you, you know that is something that you use as your advantage because mm -hmm. it is powerful. It is empowering. Right, and it is. I think a lot of people need to know that, you know, it, it is powerful, you know, it is empowering for you to embrace where you come from. No, it, it truly is. It truly is. And I feel that um, because we, uh, my sister and I, when I say we, that's who I'm referring to, um, because we grew up with two different sets of cultures, um, we we grew up very differently from like a typical like Puerto Rican household mm -hmm. or just a Nicaraguan household. So we would listen to like ranchera growing up and but at the same time we listen to salsa right so and that's a very good mix of how we grew up like that's like the best um example that i have so like when it comes to food for instance in nicaragua they have something called nakatamal which is kind of like the equivalent to the pasteles from puerto rico but it's made with masa instead of guineo and yeah. um so when they eat it, when they're eating it, they put lemon on it, right? But we were, you know, in the Puerto Rican neighborhood, basically. So we always have pasteles for Christmas time, right? Christmas, so yeah. because we grew up with a Nicaraguan mom, we would put um, lemon on our pasteles, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of the typical ketchup. So we would go to people's houses and then we would say, oh yeah, can we get pasteles? And then we're like, can we get lemon? You know, and they're looking at us like, what? That doesn't go with lemon. So blend, so, yeah. Right. So that's like, and for us, it was very normal. But for someone else, it's like, it, it's like weird. Like, why do you need lemon on your pasteles? But yeah, so that, that's like little things of here and there of how our mix um, was unique, but like normal to us. And, you know, that's one thing I do love about being Hispanic. It's just, you know, how open we are. We're so yeah. open to like, trying new things, you know, like mm -hmm. talking to people in general. We're just very open about a lot of things, you know. And no, exactly. I know, just, yeah, I, I think, you know, it's a celebration. Just, you know, being Hispanic, it's a 24-7 celebration. Yeah. From the moment we get out, <laughs> we're happy, yeah. we're singing, you know, we're dancing. When you're cleaning, you're dancing, I mean, yeah. <laughs> right, like, I don't know any other... Um race i guess right that like wakes up early in the morning and just starts blasting music <laughs> just my neighbors probably like, yeah my neighbors probably probably the neighbors, yeah. yeah exactly the neighbors must be like what's going on over there it's a party at eight o'clock in the morning <laughs> and you're like no it's you know we're dancing with the mop or whatever <laughs> so this is what you yeah. know everywhere we go you know it's like we bring this happiness yeah. us, you know right like, we exactly we always exude this happiness yeah and i maybe it is the music maybe it's because we're waking up so early and it's just like okay let's put some merengue rip out you know and just like get the beat going <laughs> like who knows <laughs> probably i think our culture is contagious you know i think this is why yes. So many people who may not even speak Spanish, you know, they, they listen to reggaeton, they listen to salsa. Right. It's just because of you know, how contagious it is. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. I think that that's one of the reasons why we have such popularity with like Ricky Martin, Enrique mm -hmm. Iglesias, the new people like Bad Bunny. You know, they, they're selling out these venues, you know, Romeo Santos, of course. Like, I know a lot of people that are not Hispanic and they're like, oh, yeah, I know Romeo, you know. And you're like, do you know what he's saying? No, but it's, nope. <laughs> it sounds good, you know? So um, 
So yes, I think that it is. I agree with you. I think it is contagious. And you know, Literally. back in the day, the American dream for most of the singers was to do the crossover to start recording in English. But now yeah. it's like it doesn't matter. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> I think it doesn't. Like um, everybody that I know of knows who Bad Bunny is. <laughs> you were just like, from Christina a few days but, ago. Yeah, that was. Oh my god, that was super cool. <laughs> that was very, very innovative. Yeah, so that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. No, he is. No, he totally is. He's one of my favorites right now. He really and, you know, is. Me, it's like, I'm personally very happy, you know, always very proud to see my people doing great things, you know. It's always mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, it's like when I see someone representing us and doing it well, I'm just like, yeah, I'm very happy to see that. I agree. Just I like totally I'm happy to you. see you doing what you're doing. For the <laughs> you know, oh, thank you. you know, it is a great thing that you're doing. Thank you. I, you know, I didn't see it this way, believe it or not. Like I, I didn't see how, how much of an impact it was going to, to, to be how, like how much it was going to make, you know, like I, I, it was just, you know, like I said, it was just an idea that I had in a plane ride. And, and it was just like, for me, it was like, oh, this is going to be a, a massive event. It's going to be great. And then, and, you know, little by little, like I've been noticing how, how impactful it is and I never it, like it was it's much bigger than what I ever thought it was going to be and I'm very thankful and blessed for that honestly and I feel the community sees it you know and I yeah. think you know, that because you come from the Bronx you grew up in Mahi, right. and they look mm -hmm. at you and it's like all of a sudden it's like oh wow maybe that could be me one day yeah, a lot of people have approached us, um, you know, because I do a lot of pop-ups for, um, mm -hmm. you know, to generate um, not only funds for the festival, but also to give exposure that we're here. You know, there's a film festival and um, there's and there's a, a lot of people have come up to us like, oh, when did this happen? I've been living here X amount of years and I never, you know, saw this. And I'm like, well, it's our first year, <laughs> right? But it, it, it shows like the hunger that um, that we have, you know, in the community. Like there is no... There, there's no place for for people like especially young people to come together and, and and see like films and see that they can be part of this this industry right yeah. and not like necessarily to be an actor but there's also you know being director being a producer yeah, like sir. the behind the scenes yeah or be the one like volunteering for the festival itself like be exposed that way so we've had a lot of well, I have anyways, a lot of interesting conversation with the people that I've met in our pop-ups. And this, you know, those conversations, they never go away because it's like, yeah. you're always generating ideas, you know, I'm sure you're a very yeah. creative person. So when they come up to right. you, I'm sure you know, you, you remember the stories. Right, no, I do. And then that's also part of the reason why the merchandise that we have um, came about, right? So it was about being true to the Bronx, you know, the Bronx colors is the blue and the orange. So I, you know, I said it has to be in the logo. Um, the infamous X, right? I was like, it has to be in the logo because there's no X in my haven. Um, so it was, you know, so the, the person that created the, um, the logo, like they really understood what I was saying. And it was because they're from the Bronx, you know? So they, it was just like, okay, I get it. I got it done. And, um, and that's why we have the logo that we have. But then also in those conversations, I've also learned that people needed like lip balm, right? And like pins and, and stickers and stuff. So that's why the uh, merchandise that we have is so, is so wide because we, the, due to the conversations, it's like, oh, maybe I should have a hat now, you know, or uh, kids' t-shirts, you know, like you don't have festivals like selling kids' t-shirts. <laughs> like, yeah. So, so that so I do listen to the people and I do listen um, when it comes to um, the conversations concerning film as well. Like, oh, did you um, do animation? Did you accept any animation films? You know, were, was that available? And I said, of course, that was under our experimental category. Um, you know, we had a lot of women directors also submit films. Um, we had, you know, students submit films. So it, it was a good variety. And, now, and it was also to the point where we even became an international film festival, like people from China and Africa were su submitting films. Wow. So we, we've been, like I said, we've been truly blessed in our inaugural year. No, it sounds like you guys are, you know, doing great. And, you know, 
the last thing I want to say is, you know, I want you to know what you're doing is great. And I want you to know that you're opening so many doors and I'm pretty sure you, you know, there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of people that are probably thinking, you know, I could do it. There's a lot of people who are probably about to give up and just by watching you and seeing everything right. you're through and they're starting, you know, to think maybe, you know, I could give it another try and you're opening doors, you know, and yes. just don't forget that you may not always see it, but people do see you. You know, they do. And yeah. They see that's, your work. that's pretty cool. <laughs> I feel this like a celebrity. <laughs> well, you are a local celebrity, you know. <laughs> And you know, that I'll was not the goal, this but moment I'm before glad. you yes. move to LA, you know. So. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean LA is nice, but I don't, I don't see it as a home. But it's it's a nice, it's a nice city. So I didn't have a bad experience there at all. Like the food was good, the people were great, the traffic was horrible, but that's known. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was it was a good time. But I don't see LA as a home right now. So for right now, I see the Bronx as home. I see my oh, Haven yeah. as my heart and um and everywhere i go i i rep new york city and i rep the bronx hard body <laughs> right um like it's 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 me being a new yorker is is a is a blessing and i'm glad that my grandma decided to come to new york <laughs> he knew what he was doing he did that, yeah yeah <laughs> Right. Well, Minoka, thank you so much for joining us today. All I want to say is a na uh, happy National Hispanic Heritage Month, and thank yes. you for being with us today. You too. Thank you for the invite, and blessings to you and everyone there.